Hey, Lethal listeners, Tig Torres here. Stay tuned for the next episode of Lethal Lit. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Hey, Lethal listeners, Tig here. Last season on Lethal Lit, you might remember I came to Hollow Falls on a mission. The mission of this podcast is simple. To uncover the truth. To clear my aunt's name. To put the real killer behind bars. Or die trying. But I hadn't counted on a rash of new murders tearing apart the town. My mission put myself and my friends in danger. Max! Max! Max, where are you? Though it wasn't all bad. I'm gonna be real with you, Tig. I like you. We uncovered the true identity of the lit killer. Our advisor from the school paper, Harry Levinson. I took out each and every one of those sewer rats, one by one. And we brought him to justice, ending his ten-year reign of terror. Beware, for I am fearless and therefore powerful. How's that for a literary reference, Harry? The only loose end... Ollie Price, the lit killer's protege. He's still out there, somewhere. Harry Levinson, however, was tried and convicted to multiple life sentences. I accomplished what I set out to do, clearing my Aunt Beth's name and making sure justice was finally served. Well, I'm finding out that in this town, the dead don't keep their secrets for long, and the bodies keep piling up. Welcome to season two. I'm Tig Torres, and this is Lethal Lit. It's been a while since season one of Lethal Lit. Whenever someone asked me about doing more, I told them that bringing back my murder investigation podcast would mean that something had gone very, very wrong. Yet, here we are. Let me catch you up. Hollow Falls has changed. A lot. The town has turned into a kind of theme park for murder enthusiasts, And Lethal Lit isn't the only podcast in town anymore. You're listening to Murder Boy. This is True Crime Fanatic. Welcome to Hallowed Falls. Podcasts aren't the only things that have sprung up. Mediums, psychics, and spiritual advisors moved into the vacant storefronts on Main Street. Everyone's trying to make a buck off the murders. And I can't even walk down the street without someone trying to rope me into whatever they're doing. Uh... What the hell? Oh, it's your lucky day, folks. On your left is Tig Torres, our girl who put the lit killer behind bars. Hey, hey, how about a word for your fans, Tig? How about I'm not your girl? And watch where you're going. Get your pictures, folks! Bonus if you are already rolling video, because <laughs> that is authentic Tig Torres sass right from the source. 
Hey, Tig, someday, you and I, we could own this town if we work together. Uh, just think about it, right? Officially branded lethal lit tours. We could charge whatever we want. Take a hike, Harris. Now, over on your right is Hollow Falls High. That was Harris Scruggs, one of our newest neighbors and owner of Lit Killer Tours. In my opinion, he's one of the worst profiting off the lit murders. But not everyone here is trying to exploit our tragedies. Some people are actually trying to get on with life in this place. Hello, Elenators. Coming to you from the Star Diner. The newly renovated Montague Hotel is finally opening. Bring your sunglasses because tonight it's gonna shine in all its former glory. <laughs> That's Ella, host of the YouTube channel Teen Foundation, a mashup of makeup tips and self empowerment memes. Season one listeners will remember that she was drugged and kidnapped by Levinson. We found her just in time. All right. Here's your cottage cheese and fries, topped with Colgate, the teen fluoridation special. Phil, you're in my shot. That's Wynn. She's my bouncer, backup, bestie. Don't know what I'd do without her. Well, aren't we lucky? Here comes the Montague Hotel's own front desk clerk. Uh, 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 hmm, concierge. Ooh, fancy. Max. You're right in the center of it all. How does it feel? It's no party. Walter, my boss, is Satan. He's running me ragged, and this walkie-talkie is the bane of my existence. Its range is insane. Where are you, Max? I need that cleanup done before... Roger, just left Fowler's, heading back now. Had to pick up some supplies for a little rodent issue. Seems there was a colony under the old chapel that relocated to our basement. <laughs> Max also had a run-in with the lit killer. But his scars are visible. Levinson slashed him across the face and body. We got used to looking past Max's scars, but he hasn't. His brush with death gave him drive, ambition, we all want to get out of Hollow Falls, but Max is determined to do something about it. I am a natural hospitality professional. The minute I get my diploma, I am off to the nearest Marriott. I hope it's somewhere warm where I can visit. All right, let's get started. We said we'd come to this meeting with story ideas. Who's got one? Oh, oh, oh. So, the opening of the Montague is like this huge rebrand moment for Hollow Falls, right? Rumor is Bruce Campbell is making a cameo appearance. Have to assume as Ash, but I'm pulling for Bubba Hotep. I propose a red carpet recap. Who was there? Who were they wearing? What their hopes for the town's future are? Anyone have anything a little... meatier? <laughs> if it's supposed to be such a big moment, we can do a little better than the TMZ treatment, can't we? Any story ideas from you two? You're awfully quiet. Oh, uh, well, uh, Max when and, and I, I decided. Were talking, uh, um, do you want to? I'm sorry. Uh, you go, Max. We want to write a piece about Ollie. Hmm. Huh. What about Ollie? Uh, when and I were thinking we could do an expose with a personal slant. You know what? What it was like to be his friend. How it felt to find out he was Levinson's evil apprentice. It was an intense betrayal. I mean, everything he told us was a lie. So let's find out the truth. We're pitching a who is Ollie Price piece. What do you think, Tig? I mean, or you could all take turns shoving thumbtacks under my fingernails. Just as painful and it'll save us a lot of time. I dive into early past. Look into Anna Kildeen, the victim in the Fahrenheit 451 case. Remember how strong his reaction was when you said her name, Tig? I also want to know where he slept. Hmm. It's hard to believe he was one of my best friends, and I barely knew anything about him. Yeah. It's really wild how you think you know a person, 
About as well as all of Dr. Jekyll's friends knew him. So... Personally, I hate it. Like, a lot. But... Who am I kidding? It's got legs. Let's do it. Cool. Awesome. Does that mean I can do my red carpet piece now? You should be here now! Coming! Ugh, the worst. See you tonight. You are all coming, right? Free food. Tig? (laughs) Yes. What else is there to do? Abuela, have you seen my coat? (laughs) Hi, Tigita. You look so pretty. But you could have worn a dress, eh? It's not too late. You could still come with me. I think I have spent enough time in that place for the rest of my life. This whole reopening will do nothing but bring back all ghosts that were better left undisturbed. Or bring new life into town. Let Hollow Falls start to write a new chapter for itself. Daitita. <laughs> After everything, still hopeful. <laughs> your auntie, your tia was exactly the same way, you know? You could practically be twins. <laughs> I, me bad. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's okay, abuela. She's still with us. Hello, Ellenators. We're here at the opening of the Montague Hotel, and the guests are just starting to arrive. It's a big deal in a town that hasn't had anything to celebrate in forever. Last year, they canceled the prom. I mean, wouldn't you if your history teacher murdered your principal? But there are a few fearless leaders who are working hard to make this town fun again. Speaking of, Daddy, Daddy, over here. (laughs) Don't you look nice. Thank you, Mayor Highsmith. Are you excited? Amazing, amazing turnout. Daddy, you're making Hollow Falls a town to be proud of. Thanks, kid. Uh, Now, excuse me, I have to uh, get this party started. Adorable. See, my Ellenators, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, let's see who's turning out for the biggest and brightest event of the year. Hey, Lethal listeners, stay tuned. More Lethal Lit is up next. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hey, Lethal listeners, Tig Torres here. There's always more to the mystery, and I could use your help getting to the bottom of it. Join us on Instagram and TikTok at I am Tig Torres for more clues and inside info. Finally, Torres, you being fashionably late or just regular late? Thanks for noticing, Wynn. You look amazing, too. Oh, uh, that's totally what I said. You look fashionably great. Don't know what you heard. Sarcasm aside, I do love the look. You joining the cast of Succession? Just what I was going for. It's my first suit. The best one in all of Goodwill. All right, now follow me. Max asked us to meet him up on the mezzanine before things get started. Everyone have a seat. God, I am nervous. Ella, water me. Max, we're your friends. You guys, Max is going to be doing tours at the hotel. He's giving us a sneak peek. Uh, You are doing me a favor. I need to rehearse. (sighs) All right. I'm ready. 
the Roaring Twenties. Coolidge was in the White House. The Charleston was on the dance floor. Here in Hollow Falls, the Montague Hotel was the height of glamour. Its guests, some local, some international, were well-heeled industrialists of the day. Take a look over the balcony at the top of the grand staircase and imagine the crowd below. Ladies in flapper dresses, men in derbies and boaters. The Monty was the place to be. But not for long. October 29th, 1929, Black Tuesday. The stock market crash left James S. Montague, owner of the Monty, penniless. Two nights later, on Halloween Eve, Montague walked through the basement passageways, past the staff, and out the rear entrance. Do you know what's coming? Did he get a bucket of chicken and binge watch Drag Race All-Stars? He stepped out over the falls. <gasps> OMG, drama! James Montague's body was never found. But a drop from that height rarely leaves anything in one piece. I suspect a lot of turtles downstream cultivated a new appetite for human flesh. We're supposed to make it creepy. It's a thing. Very good. Very, very good. But you got one detail wrong. He actually snuck out through a secret passage built for bootleggers back in the Prohibition days. Nice touch on the turtles, though. Very theatrical. Oh, the tourists will love a secret passage. The better the thrills, the better the tips. (laughs) Well said. And I made sure the contractors didn't plaster it over in the renovations. I'll show you after my speech, when I'm sick of schmoozing with the yokels. What's your name, son? Uh, Max. Uh, Max Weinman. Oh, like the name. Has an old school ring to it. The Max Weinman Jazz Trio. And these are your... Ladies? Oh, they're my friends, my test audience. I wanted to practice my tour. Oh, smart, smart. Hi, sweethearts. Now, if you would excuse me, I have a little speech of my own to give. Watch how it's done, kid. Brock's got two hotels in SoCal. Can you imagine if he brought me out there? L.A., baby! Now we're talking. I'm totally there. I can live stream on the beach. Oh, 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 yikes, the time. Walter's gonna kill me. Oh, uh, be right back. Did you see that? Mommy, how are you? Wait, you at the opening? Oh, good memory, Poppy. I didn't mention my dad much last season. When I was working the Lit Killer case, I let all his calls go to voicemail. I kind of felt like he dumped me here to fend for myself. There was a ton of scary stuff that happened back then, and my mindset was, if anything happened to me, it'd be his fault. Wynne reminded me that my dad didn't exactly ghost me. He had to take a job on an oil tanker and couldn't leave me in New York by myself, which is why I'm living here with Abuela. But I know he's doing his best to support us both, and I'm learning to be more mature about the whole thing. So, I answer his calls now, and we're working on our relationship. Hi. I wish I could find another job to easy down. I'd whisk you away and take you back to the city. It's okay, Bobby. It actually feels really nice tonight. Like there's life here. Everyone's dressed up and happy. For now, evil is just stick a siesta. <laughs> Bobby, you're worse than me. <laughs> Tig, it's about to start. Max and Ella save seats for us in the front. This way, there's a shortcut through the lounge. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? You're not gonna like this. Podcasters Lounge? Really? Uh, we can go around. No, no, screw it. Let's just power through. 
listening to the Hallowed Falls podcast, and we're coming to you live from the Montague's grand opening. I have to say, the whole town is simply buzzing. Ten of Cups reversed. Shattered dreams, broken family. This town and the Montague name have a dark history. Coming through. Excuse us. This is Murder Boy. Reporting from the swankiest stop on any murder fan's vacation plans, and... Wait, Tig. Tig Torres. Do you have a few words for the Murder Boy audience? Do you think we've really seen the last of Levinson? What? Jeez, pal, get out of here with that crap. This was a bad idea. Back here, Tig. Ugh, there's that clown, Montague. And Ella's dad. Shh. What are they up to? I'm happy to introduce you. People know me. Say what you need to about the hotel and I'll take it from there. But we still need to talk about the plans for the extension. The spa? You need to clear those permits for me. Yes, well, it's a bit of a roadblock, but nothing I can't finesse. The state environmental regulators are having a fit because of the mine explosion over where the old chapel used to be. But I've got an old college buddy in the agency who says he'll have it cleared in no time. Just let me know what wheels I have to grease. Oh! <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, I thought I told you no. Something I can help with? Evening, Mr. Mayor. Harris Scruggs. Uh, Harris wants to sell me... Uh, what was it? <laughs> Exclusive ownership of the official Lit Killer Tour. The mayor will tell you it is a very successful business, up 200% in eight months. You could do tour packages for your guests and have the shuttle leave from the parking lot. With me staying on as a GM and tour guide, and minority partner, of course. I can't lose. I said no. Still no. <laughs> you're, you're making a mistake. It's, it's definitely a no-brainer, you know? Harris, let's give Brock some space, hmm? You uh, ready to go on in five? Please. I was born ready. See you after, Highsmith. We have a lot to celebrate. That we do, Brock. <laughs> oh, this town. Bunch of backwoods buffoons. Now, what do I have to do to get a drink around here? Win! Tig! Seat saved! Uh, thanks. There's my daddy! Doesn't he look great? I dressed him. What do you think, Tig? Uh, he looks nice. Maybe someday you'll let me dress you? Seriously, Tig. You'd shine with a little bit of mascara and eyeliner. <laughs> you think Taurus will let you touch her? Don't hold your breath. Just because she won't let you touch her. Whoa. Oh, relax. Not being able to take a joke is a terrible quality. Ah, uh, speaking of terrible qualities, this guy is everywhere. Ah, uh, if it isn't Velma and the Scooby Gang. Oh, jinkies, if it isn't the suspicious and overly ambitious tour bus driver. With the pungent breath. You all right there, buddy? Don't hate. <laughs> I come bearing gifts. What is this, liquor? One for you, and you, and here you go, Tig. Oh, come on, join in on the fun. This fanfare isn't because of Brock or because of the hotel. They're here because of a story that captured the imagination of the nation. A story told by you, Tig. First of all, no thanks. I'm good. Mm, I'll keep asking. Second of all, we're under a- Hey! I'll take that then. Can't serve minors on opening night now, can we? Mr. Montague, I am so sorry. I would never- hey, Relax, kid. Unless we get fined, who cares? I will give you one more tip for your tour, though. When it comes to public speaking, a little lubrication never hurts. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have a speech to give. Ugh, what a pompous... Why do I feel like I need to pour hand sanitizer down my ear canal every time that guy talks? Ugh, Daddy has been complaining about him nonstop. Ooh, gotta run. Uh, think about it, Tig, and uh, Max, send me your press list. The whole town is here. You, you really packed them in. Sure, sure, yes, y yes, I will. See you after the ribbon cutting. Bye. Whoa, Max, 
put your tongue back in your mouth. Uh, um, how about we all worry about our own tongues, okay? And aside from being easy on the eyes, I have to work all angles if I want to break out of this town. There aren't a lot of mentors to be had in Hollow Falls. Max? Max, over. Where the hell are you? I need you at your post now. Oh, there you are. What the hell have you been doing? Uh, just keeping Mr. Montague happy, sir. That talking hairpiece is going to be on the first flight out of here tomorrow. Worry about keeping me happy. Claire? Yes, sir. Coming, sir. Yikes. Double yikes. Triple yikes. This parade of the men in Max's life ain't exactly giving me the warm and fuzzies. Oh, shh, shh, quiet down. Daddy's going on first. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of all ages, the day is finally here. Less than ten months ago, we broke ground at the Montague Hotel to resurrect a vision of the past. When it first opened in 1910, this hotel was the crown jewel of the land, the gold standard of accommodations. This incarnation will be no different. Leave it to developer owner Brock Montague, grandson of the original owner, James, to put a, a Hollow Falls twist on it. Now, each room welcomes you into a different literary nightmare. Care to check into the Edgar Allan Poe room? The heart beating below the floorboards might keep you awake. Unless, of course, you turn it off. Switches in the closet. <laughs> And we have seven rooms that were designed after Hollow Falls' own lit killer murders. <laughs> Go to sleep if you dare. Ooh. <laughs> there are lit killer murder rooms? Now, now uh, without further ado, please help me in giving a warm welcome to Hollow Falls' favorite son. He made it good in Hollywood and is now bringing a little of that glitter back to his hometown. Brock Montague. Thank you, thank you. It's so good to be back in my hometown, so good. I was just saying to my wife, I just got married a few weeks ago. Oh, thank you, thank you. We're very happy, but like I said, it's only been a few weeks. <laughs> oh, Ginger, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Now, when I was growing up here in Hollow Falls, you had to watch your back. But now it's a charming little tourist town that's known for murder, home of the lit killer. And starting tonight, when people come to trace his bloody footsteps, they'll have somewhere nice to stay. Because after months of hard work, the doors of the Montague Hotel are finally open. I wish my grandfather was here to see it. Oh, that reminds me. Where did I put that thing? Ah, oh, here it is. <laughs> That's the Montague theme song that James Montague commissioned in 1910. Someone left this old music box for me at the front desk. Don't know who. Don't remember the lyrics. Thoughtful gift regardless. I want to bring that feeling back to Hollow Falls. A place for, for good times and new... <coughs> excuse me. Something in my throat. <coughs> new friends. <coughs> we all need new... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Water, please. <coughs> Can I get a glass of water? <coughs> Just like that, Brock Montague was dead. The coroner's report said it was a stroke, but I knew in my heart it was foul play. And what if I was the actual target? He could have been poisoned by the drink he snatched out of my hand. And if you think I'm being paranoid and murder crazy, well, 
When I got home that night, there was a package at my door, addressed to me with a handwritten label and no return address. Inside was an untraceable burner phone. Hello? Take. It's me. Ollie. Einhorn's Epic Productions and iHeartRadio present Lethal Lit, A Tig Torres Mystery, Season 2. Created and executive produced by Heather Einhorn and Adam Staffaroni. Created by Alex Segura and Monica Gallagher. Executive produced by iHeartRadio. Head writer, Melanie Hoops. Writers, Louis Kornfeld, Jasmine Alshami, and Adam Staffaroni. Directed by Kritzia Bajos, with performances by Rebecca Soler as Tig Torres. Shelly Shinoy as Wynn, Matt Gumley as Max, Luke Slattery as Ollie, Rachel Oramland as Ella, with Kritzia Bajos and J.B. Blanc. Special guest Chuck Bryant as Brock Montague. Additional voices, Paul Guyot, Caleb Yen, Stacey Mosley, Alba Ponce de Leon, Stephanie Shea, Christian Ochoa, Louis Kornfeld, and Megan Gray. Post sound and music by Chapter 4. Sound supervision and sound design by Sarah Gibalaska. Music by Kareem Duwady. Produced by Arup Sanakaila and Bo Youngblood. Development Executive, Greg Lockhart. Production Coordinator and Script Supervisor, Laura Martin. Operations, Laura Kaufman. Marketing and Publicity, Jesse Post. Digital Marketing, Jennifer Gennaro. Creative Direction and Design by Ryan McCann. Key Art Illustrated by Rebecca Mock. Promotional Art Illustrated by Bree Newman. Special thank you to The Shadow Unicorn. Head to LethalLitPodcast.com to share theories, discover new evidence, and follow case updates. Einhorn's Epic Productions and iHeartRadio present Lethal Lit, A Tig Torres Mystery.